Hello, my name is Maggie Haynes. I'm the CEO and the founder of Tupney Barn. Tupney Barn is a charity which is based in um, Southbourne uh, in West Sussex. I started the project with two uh, main aims. So the vision was to grow organic food for the local community because there wasn't very much around in 2005, but also um, to teach children about the environment, where their food com comes from, and about sustainability um, as a whole. In 2017, we became a, a charity and um, we have three charitable objectives. So the main one is, as per my vision, it's about teaching children about the environment and food education. Hi, I'm Abby. I am one of the education officers here at Tuppany Barn. Um, we educate uh, young people about growing healthy food, um, sustainability, uh, food education, um, the bees. Um, I'm also a trained beekeeper and I help to look after the hives here. So we do workshops on, on the bees, um, why they're important and other pollinators, um, why they're important, why they're in trouble, uh, what we can do to help them. Um, we do lots of practical activities with, um, with the young people we have through here. We've actually got some uh, pro um, preschool uh, children in with us soon having their end of term visit. But we have uh, preschool, primary school, secondary school, um, also, um, we've got some college students coming to us in a few weeks as well. So a, a whole range of, of young people uh, that we educate here at Tuppany Barn. But yes, fork to fork, we go and harvest and crop um, from our beautiful grounds. And then we take our produce back to the kitchen in the centre and we cook with the young people. And then we eat together uh, the things that we have cooked. And it's a real shared experience. The second one is horticultural therapy. So four years ago, we started out on our journey um, of establishing a horticulture therapy activity here at Tuffany Barn. Uh, we do know the science is there, that if you do garden, there's something in the soil that connects with the brain um, and it gives you positive endorphins. So it, it is a good thing to do. There's been lots of studies into horticulture therapy over the years, uh, quite a lot um, since the pandemic and we know it's a proven therapy. Hello, I'm Jane, I work at Tuppany Barn and I'm one of the two horticultural therapists. So um, there's lots and lots of evidence out there now about the benefits of uh, therapeutic horticulture. Of course, being out in the open in the fresh air um, can be beneficial. People are moving, bending, um, digging, weeding, all those sorts of things. Of course, there's inherent in the whole process is, is hope because you're planting a seed and hoping that it will grow and survive and if you do certain things you increase the chances of that survival so it can be very inspiring for folk um, to do that. Uh, the other really nice thing about uh, doing the gardening here at Tuppany is uh, the produce is used you know it's not just grown for the sake of it and then most of it ending up on a compost heap. It, it, it gets used in the veg bags, it gets sold in the shop, surplus is even given to the clients should they want to take some home with them. So that helps all that all helps add to the sense of purpose. So the clients come here but they also feel they're contributing to the, ch the overall aims of the charity. Uh, and the final um, and third objective is what we do within the community. So it's helping um, those within the community that have needs um, this really came to the forefront uh, during the pandemic. So from that, um, we have a shop that we open. Uh, we used to open two days a week because it was a pandemic and the need to do a deep clean after opening to the public. We decided to open just one day a week, but to maximise um, all the produce that we could, um, both our, what we grow here and we link into two other organic growers. Um, we also have artisan organic bread, um, we have organic um, eggs that come in. Um, we also do a vegetable weekly bag scheme um, and we identified from normally doing about 50 a week, we expanded it and we, the capacity was 88. So that's what we did for the duration. Um, what we also did, we established a food box scheme um, we linked in with the local organisations like the church, the surgery, the parish council 
and um, the local schools, there's three in the locality, um, and they referred families to us who were in dire need of food parcels. So we identified 20 families, uh, we raised 14,000 and um, for 23 weeks um, these families had a, a really good food box. And we also had a scheme for anybody who was um, classed as vulnerable that couldn't get out uh, but could pay. So it was a not-for-profit scheme and there are about 55 people on the list and again we delivered and we had volunteers who came and delivered on that side. So that's the, the community side. A big impact, I think, because obviously the chi all the local schools come and sort of realise it's here. And we often, when we have school visits, the kids come back afterwards with their family to show, you know, what they've done and they try new things, things that they wouldn't r normally try at home. And they don't realise, you know, and I'm sure Maggie said already, you know, that vegetables come out the ground, you know, <laughs> they come from the supermarket. They don't know where sort of their food, you know, sort of cycle is. And, you know, so it's educating local children, but also it's therapy. You know, we have lots of other groups that go on within here. So it's sort of well-being and sort of mental health. And also just being with people, you know, it's, it's lovely, isn't it, that like the same sort of thing. So I think it has a huge impact on the community. Uh, it's quite surprising how many people don't know we're here, even that are local. So every time someone comes and says, I've never been before, you know, I'm local, I say, why? <laughs> you know, that's terrible. But when they're here, they love it, you know. And, you know, they, they come back, you know, once they've been, they always come back because it's such a lovely place to be. So since 2010, uh, I have to say um, that we've been hugely grateful for the advice and help that we've had um, over the years. And being a charity, um, they had a hand in helping us um, get to be a, a charity. The Volunteer Bureau gave us advice on what we needed to do paperwork-wise and to look at the way that we were structured. So there was a lot of work involved and certainly the Voluntary Bureau um, gave us um, a, a lot of help and advice and we were hugely grateful for that. Um, we've been to them over the years for advice on fundraising before we had our own individual fundraisers. Um, we've been on some of their courses. Um, when we started to have volunteers working at uh, Tupney Barn, we went to ask about um, guidance um, about a volunteer plan and um, how um, we needed to set ourselves up and to make sure that we were adhering to all the things like risk assessments, health and safety. Um, we linked in during the time of the pandemic just to make sure that we were doing stuff uh, correctly and actually every aspect I know there's always been somebody at the end of the telephone who would help they've never kind of failed in that mission so um, I'm really grateful um, for what they've given us over the years and I do hope that they get the recognition deserve for all they work, the work they do um, I'm not quite sure where we'd be without them and um, I really um, I'm proud of the collaboration that we've had with VAC um, over the years.